Have you heard of provisions? Provisions are very powerful. You've even heard people say, if there is a vision, God will send a provision. Well, this is another message from five minutes or less with Jesus. According to 2 Peter 1 and 4, that you may be partakers of the divine nature. You see, provisions are very powerful. It's actually defined as God's guided care and concern for his people. That's why he says not even a bird will be able to fall to the ground without God knowing. Every hair on our head of every human on the earth is numbered and God knows them distinctly. Provisions are very powerful. Let me tell you something. Anytime you see a word in Scripture, New Testament, that begins with P-R-O, pro, pro, vision, pro literally comes from the, the word where it speaks of going forward, going forward forward in strength. So when you see the word provision, that means that is providence is coming your way for the vision in strength. We are made partakers of the divine nature, receiving and sharing God's own nature through his promises. Then we have to work that divine nature into our human nature by developing godly habits. Get up and pray. Stay in the word. Stay in prayer. Stay in church. First habit to develop is the habit of recognizing God's provision for me. Can you say for me? We say, however, oh, I can't afford it. One of the worst lies is wrapped up in that statement. We talk as if our heavenly father has cut us off without a penny or put you on some type of spiritual welfare system. That's not the case. Jesus said, I came that you might have life, zo, so you could come out of the zoo and life more abundantly. My God. You see, we think it is a sign of true humility to say at the end of the day, well, I just barely got by today. But it was a severe struggle. And you know it was. And yet all of almighty God is ours in the Lord Jesus. And he will reach into the last grain of sand and the remote star to bless us if he or you will only obey him. Does it really matter that our circumstances are difficult? Why shouldn't they be? If we give way to self-pity and indulge in the luxury of misery, we remove God's riches from our lives and hinder others from entering into provision. Don't block someone else's provision with your misery. No sin is worse than the sin of self-pity because it removes God from the throne of our lives, replacing him with our own self-interests. Self-pity, self-interest, focus on self, self-grandizement. Oh, you could fall into a lot of self and it'll block the provisions. Hallelujah. It causes us to open our mouth only to complain. Remember, complaining is draining. And we simply become spiritual sponges, always absorbing, never giving and never being satisfied. And there is nothing lovely or generous about your life when you're walking in that. Before God becomes satisfied with us, he will take everything of our so-called wealth until we learn that he is our source. As the psalmist said, all my springs are in you. Psalms 87, 7. My God, can I tell you something? God holds us responsible. God is able to make all grace abound toward us that you may have an abundance. Second Corinthians nine and eight. Then learn to lavish in the grace of God, even the grace of God for others, generously giving of yourself. Be marked and identified with God's nature and his blessings will flow through you at all times. This has been another message from five minutes or less 
with Jesus.